Oh, I come from a long line of singers, to, to be honest. In my whole family, everybody always sang. Uh, and believe me, my father could sound, sing like Muddy Waters. <laughs> I think I got my talent from my daddy because my mom couldn't, couldn't sing at all. But she always was trying, you know. But uh, as a little girl, I always sang in church, grew up singing duets with my sister, and um, singing all the Grand Ole Opera songs, the songs. You know, and we'd go out. I'm from Mississippi, by the way, out in the rural area, picking and chopping cotton and stuff. And uh, we would always sing, you know. And uh, what really made me think that I might be able to become a professional one day, uh, one of the guys in the, heard me singing in the field, and he told my mom that she should get me some singing lessons and, and, and try to put me out there as a professional vocalist, you know. And that, that kind of encouraged me, you know. That was the that, that was the main thing. What was the uh, where where where, where you, now you said you were from Mississippi? Yes. Tell me specifically where. Right here in this area, uh, I happen to be right now in Greenwood, Mississippi. I'm from Flora County. Of course, I was born out in a rural area, in Flora County, and uh, my family moved to uh, Belzona, Mississippi. When I was very, very young, about seven years old, we moved to Belzona, Mississippi, and I finished growing up uh, mainly until about 13 in Belzona, and then I ended up in Chicago after that. All right. Tell me, tell me about Chicago. Was that where you did your first professional stand? Actually, actually yes. In Chicago, uh, I worked for many years uh, as a, uh, in a dry cleaning plant and and uh, as a barmaid in a, a club, and I've always been interested in writing songs. But first of all, I joined a female gospel group in Chicago and sang with a choir there. The group was uh, the Sacred Five, I believe the name was, and I, I, I sang with the choir and at the church. And um, there was, um, as, as a barmaid, I was walking around singing and writing songs all the time. And uh, everybody said, so, well, what are you going to do with all those songs you're writing? I said, I don't know. I said, it's, uh, if I could find somebody that could help me. And there was a guy who came into the bar. His name was Billy the Kid Emerson, which used to be a Sun record recording artist uh, in, in Memphis with Sun Records. And um, he was uh, very popular at that time. This was like 1963. Uh, he had out a big record called, If You Make the Trip, I'll Pop the Whip. So he came into the bar, they introduced me to him. And uh, he said, well, if you can sing the song, I'll play the piano or the organ and let you make a tape and I'll take it to Chess Records. So he took it to Chess Records and they were more interested in me than they were the song. And uh, they wanted to sign me to a recording contract. Well, that just frightened me to death because I had never sung as a soloist. And uh, I was really frightened by that. And I said, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. And um, so I thought about it. And I, I said, now, wait a minute. And, you uh, know, a voice came to me one night. I was in bed, thought I was asleep. And uh, this voice says, now, you've been praying and asking the Lord to show you a better way to make a living. And now he's shown it to you, and you won't take it. And I, this, is, this is honest. This is truth. And I woke up, and I searched my apartment over, because it felt like someone sat on my bed and spoke those words to me. And I walked around my apartment, said, God, there's somebody in here with me, you know. And then when I realized that there was no one there, I said, well, I must have been dreaming. And uh, I went back to sleep, but I thought about that. And I just kept going over and over in my mind. You know, who is this talking to me? What is this, you know? And uh, I uh, finally, the next day I made up my mind, okay, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it. So then I called the guy and said, I, I want to go to Chess, sign the recording contract. I went down, we signed, and uh, I signed for one year. And uh, I, I told them that I had no experience. They said, well, if he's willing to work with you, take a chance on you, we'll take a chance on you. And so consequently, we went out and he would take me around to all of the, uh, they used to have, in Chicago, they had what they called jam sessions, where every Monday, 10 o'clock every Monday, 
at a little club called the Trocadero and many other places in, in, in Chicago that they would have these jam sessions where everybody would come and bring their guitars or horns or whatever they played. They would always have the drums and keyboards set up there, you know. And you, whatever instrument you played, if you sang, you come in and you could work. You could come in and just, nobody's getting paid, but everybody's jamming, you know. And uh, this guy started taking me around, and I would jam with them. And then uh, most of the time, at, at first I couldn't keep time with the music very well and had problems. <laughs> I had problems with keys, you know, staying in key and all, and some of the guys didn't want to work with me, you know, they, they, they said, oh man, she, man, she can't sing, get away from here, you know. But you know, I just kept trying, you know, just kept going. And then eventually, we started entering talent contests. They had like a talent show on Tuesday nights, and I would enter the talent shows, and then I started winning first prize. And uh, when I started winning that money, you know, like $50, you know, that was great, you know. That inspired me, hey, there must be something to this thing, you know, I can do it. <laughs>